As the waitress came back and poured more coffee, he noticed the top button of her blouse was undone, exposing the bra which held an abundance of life in front of him. I get off at noon, Mr. Bader, and I don't live far away, she said with a coy smile, looking at his name tag. He almost choked on his waffle, and she smiled even more. Why was this happening? I have an early flight this morning, Mary Ann, he said, noticing her name tag. I am really sorry. Perhaps another time. She poured him some coffee as her smile changed to a disappointed frown. Just my luck, huh? She said. Maybe when you get back. She handed him the bill and wrote her phone number on it and the words, no charge, and smiled even more. Call me when you get back. And now you owe me one. Dallas here. We have perimeter secure, front and back, came the word on the radio. Philly moving in, was the response. The second team moved to the front door and checked for any obvious signs of tampering. A cobweb at the top of the door tied to the doorframe signified the door had not been open in probably at least 24 hours and maybe longer. Front door hasn't been open in at least a day, the agent relayed. The rear of the house was a much bigger problem. The agents were exposed due to the large double glass sliding door. There were curtains, but they were drawn back. They could see inside, and the place looked empty, except for the sparse bits of furniture. I can see nothing inside. I'm set to scan. The agent pulled out his electronic scanning device and began to run it up and down the back window. It would detect any electronic device within a 50-foot radius. I'm getting something. Back off! Back off! We have activation! The agents quickly pulled back and hit the ground in the backyard. The agents at the front door did the same. Pull back! Pull back! You boys ready to order? Susie Truck Stop was standing over them. Pencil in hand and gum a choppin. Pulled pork on rye the special today. The boys, stunned by the sudden turn of events, stopped glaring at the SUV long enough to signal the waitress pulled pork on rye would be just fine for the both of them. As she turned away, she didn't smile, but gave a sort of half hearted thought to suggest the two men she was encountering were true losers in the best sense of the word. We can't let them go, Jake whispered to his friend, who nodded in agreement, then took the officer's gun from Jake's hand. Rob pointed to the back of the white van and motioned for the two to get in and lay down. The officer knew what was next, but hoped it wouldn't come to that. He thought about his wife and children, two little girls, ages six and eight, and how he kissed them for probably the last time when he left his house this morning. The young man saw the face of his first love wandering in the back of his mind to the forefront. Jenny Lynn was a cream-faced beauty with jet black hair and a ribbon at the base of her neck. She was luscious and... He'd not treated her like the lady she was to become. He thought of his parents, his dad, who gave him the ill-fated SUV, and his mom, who kissed her only son on the cheek this morning, before he went to work. He said he'd see them later, but now he figured later was never going to come. Then he heard the shot, and he knew. Officer Tom Franks, his dad's best friend, was dead. He never heard the second shot.
Do we have a recent international connection to this guy? Or his operatives? Word stepped up. No, we don't. But if you have anything you think might help, by all means, put it into motion. Henderson stepped in. We need the cooperation of all these agencies represented here to pull this off. I don't have to remind you that if this plot, however big it is, happens, this country could be in for a repeat of what we had in the years following 2001. And this administration, politically, is dead. You all know how much President Giles has backed law enforcement during his first term. So, people, if there isn't anything else... Yes, sir, there is, responded Fletcher from the Department of Transportation. Fitz, the 9-11 hijackers were pilots, or at least enough of them were, that they could fly the planes into buildings. Have you looked into the current status of pilots in the U.S.? I mean, if this guy is as clever as you seem to think, and he is homegrown, what is to stop him from having homegrown recruits who might already be pilots? I don't want to hear of any waterboarding, fingernails being pulled out, gunshots blowing off knees. Do you understand, Ed? The Attorney General advised his Justice Department colleague. I don't want to hear of anything like that. Jameson nodded he understood. Then he made a motion as if he were taking gloves off his hands. Shut looked at him, smiled and slapped his shoulder. I knew we were on the same page from the beginning, he said. Now let's get this bastard. As the attorney general left the room, Fitz walked over to Jameson and asked what the conversation was all about. Politics, my friend. Politics, Jameson answered. We'll do whatever we have to do to break this case. And as long as the AG doesn't see anything we did as wrong, or doesn't know about it... We're in the clear. You might lose your job, and I might lose mine. But we saved the country, and the president gets reelected. And the attorney general, maybe, just maybe, gets a slap on the wrist. CYA? CYA. I don't know what you're talking about! Mustafa shouted as he lay on the floor. Fitz bent down and went face to face with him and prodded him again. Tell me about our Kabul now, you motherfucking maggot! Or I'll kick the shit out of you! Fitz yelled. Robert Gee, tell me about him! And what were you supposed to do on September 11? Mustafa rolled his eyes upward. He had only heard the name of Robert Gee once in his life, when he first met the man who recruited him. He didn't know the man's name to be Robert Gee. But he did hear the name in conversation back five years ago, when he joined the organization. I don't know who this Mustafa is, and I don't know Robert Gee. My name is... Bam! A swift kick to his spine cut short his words. And again, Fitz got into his face. Don't give me that shit, Mustafa. We know you are Mustafa, and you're part of a group known as Sword of Allah by Muhammad. Now what were your plans for September 11? Infidels, you shall now feel the Sword of Allah by Muhammad. In the power of Al Kabul! Bader yelled into the microphone as he drove the plane toward the main part of the terminal and as the tower crew watched in horror. The FBI agents sat silent and helpless, listening to the tower chief. Flight 888, do not attempt to land. Please, avert, 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 you fucking asshole, avert!